Hello everyone. Welcome back to lesson 6 of Elements of Mechanical Engineering. In the previous lesson, we did discuss the concepts of thermodynamics and the laws of thermodynamics. So, in this particular lesson, we will solve few numericals using the laws of thermodynamics, especially the first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics. So, let us go through the numericals one by one. The first numerical, it says 50 kilojoules of work is done on a gas and the gas loses 130 kilojoules of heat to its surrounding. What is the change in the internal energy? So before we solve any numericals, so one thing you should be aware of. So if this is a system, so system can receive it or it can reject it. This work can be done on the system or work can be done by the system. So let us see the convention connected to this work and the heat. If work is done on the system, on the system, then we perceive that as negative. If work is done by the system, so then we take it as positive. If work is done by the system, it is positive direction. If it is work is done on the system, then we pursue it as negative. Similarly, when it comes to eat, so this is with respect to work. So when it comes to eat, if eat is added to the system, then we take it as positive. If eat is rejected by the system, then we take it as negative. So bear this mind, this convention is used while solving numericals. So work is done on the system, negative. Work is done by the system, positive. Eat added to the system is positive and eat rejected by the system is negative. So let us move ahead with this problem. So 50 kilojoules of work is done on a gas and the gas loses 130 kilojoules of heat to its surroundings. If you just see this data, so 50 kilojoules of work is done on the gas. That means work is done on to the system. So that means it has to be pursued as minus 50 kilojoules. And the gas loses 130 kilojoules of heat. That means it is being rejected by the system. So this 130 kilojoules also need to be taken as negative. So in the given data set, so work done on the system or on the gas is 50 kilojoules of heat. So minus 50 kilojoules of heat. Similarly, heat lost by the gas, that is heat rejected by the gas, Q is also taken as minus 130 kilojoules. So what is asked? What is the change in the internal energy? So from first law of thermodynamics, we know that delta U is equal to Q minus W. So as you know that the entire work cannot be derived from the heat that is being added to the system. So a part is used for raising the internal energy of the system. So that is given by delta U which is nothing but equal to Q minus W. So in this particular problem, so minus 130 is the heat rejected by the system minus of minus 50 is the work done on the system. So in total it will be minus 130 plus 50. So change in the internal energy delta U will be equal to minus 80 kilojoules. So this is the solution for the first problem. So moving on to the next numerical. A gas is a closed cylinder is heated with 10 joules of energy causing the piston of the cylinder to rise by 2 meters with 3 newton force. So what are the change in the energy of the system? So there is a gas which is filled in a cylinder and that cylinder is fitted with a piston. Okay. So what we are doing, we are adding heat to it. So if this is the cylinder and if this is the piston, so you have, you have gas in this. So what you are doing, you are adding 10 joules of heat to it. When I add 10 joules of heat to it, it is making the piston to move by how much? So this piston, if this is the piston, so this moves up by how much? 2 meter distance. 
so what is the force that is making this piston to move so the gas is exerting a force of 3 newton so as i add it what happens the density decreases as the density decreases volume increases as the volume increases obviously that volume will be acting on the piston thereby pushing the piston up so what is the force that is acting on the piston 3 newton so when 3 newton force acts on the piston it pushes the piston by a distance of how much 2 meters so that means a work is done by the system isn't it so what is that work moving the piston by 2 meters when 3 newtons of force is acting on that piston so that is work so from the given problem heat supplied so q is how much q is 10 joules of heat is being supplied to the system what are the distance moved by the piston 2 meter that is taken as l and what is the force acting on the piston f so this is the given data 3 newtons of force so solution let us find what is the work done by the system so work done is nothing but what force acting on the piston thereby moving a piston by a distance l so f into l gives you the force into distance gives you the work done by the system or by the gas so which is here 3 newton a force moving the piston by 2 meters so therefore 3 into 2 6 newton meter is the work done so newton meter is converted into joules so 1 joule is nothing but equal to 1 newton meter so newton meter is nothing but 1 joule okay so 6 joules of work is being done by the system so what is the heat added to the system 10 joules q we have given so what we have asked what is the change in the internal energy so as usual by the first law of thermodynamics delta u is given by q minus w so q is 10 joules and 6 joules of work is being done by the system so therefore the change in the internal energy is 4 joules okay so let's move on to the next numerical a gas in a cylinder is heated causing the piston to rise the gas performs 3 joules of work to rise the piston such that it has the final total energy of 15 joules how much heat is added to the system so it is very much similar to the previous problem but here they have said that the gas is performing a work so of 3 joules so work is being done by the system okay so after doing the work so the total energy is what 15 joule so what is the total heat added into the system so the given data work done by the system is what 3 joule so what are the total energy so total energy is nothing but change in the internal energy so that is given as 15 joules so they are add asking you what is q if this is the system we are adding some q amount of it and this is delivering you some w amount of work so obviously what is some energy is being stored within the system that is what we call it as internal energy so after this this is how much three joules of work is being done by it after adding it this is 15 joules so they are asking how much of it is being added into the system so w is given delta u is given q is what you are supposed to calculate so solution by first law of thermodynamics delta u is given by q minus w but here we are supposed to calculate what is the heat added to the system q so q is given by delta u plus w so in this case it is 15 plus 3 18 joules jul of it is being added to the system out of which 3 joules of work is by, done by the system and remaining 15 joules is the change in the internal energy okay so let's see the next numerical so it says the working fluid in an engine executes a cyclic process with two work interactions and three heat transfers the work interactions are 40 kilojoules to the fluid 30 kilojoules from the fluid the two heat transfers are 70 kilojoules to the working fluid and 60 kilojoules from the working fluid so determine the third heat interaction so it says that it is a cyclic process cyclic means means so the ending point and the beginning point for the next cycle are same okay so start point and the finishing point are same that is what we call it as cyclic process so in this cycle process there are five Totally, there are five interactions. So out of this five, there are two work and three heat interactions. So two work interactions and.
three eat interactions. Out of five, they have given four data. So two work interaction data is given. Out of three Q uh, Q or three eat interaction, two eat interactions are given, and you are supposed to find the third eat interaction. So what is given here with respect to work? Two work interactions. So forty kilojoules to the fluid. That is work is done on the system. So therefore. 40 kilojoules is work done on the system it will be minus 40 kilojoule and 30 kilojoule is work is done by the fluid so work is done by the system so it will be plus 30 kilojoules only so similarly two e transfers what they are given is 70 kilojoules to the system or to the working fluid that is 70 kilojoules of it is added to the system so it is taken as positive and 60 kilojoules of it from the system or from the working flow it is nothing but it rejected by the system so 60 kilojoules is minus so this is how you are supposed to take so the given data w1 is minus 40 because done on the system w2 is 30 done by the system q1 is it added to the system 70 kilojoules 60 kilojoules from the working fluid that is it rejected by the fluid so q2 will be equal to 60 kilojoules so we are supposed to find Q3. So from the first law of thermodynamics, so we know that in a cyclic process, summation of all the work will be equal to summation of all the heat transfer or heat interactions. So let us find what is the net work done. So cyclic interval of change in work is nothing but equal to summation of all the work done by the system or work done on the system, whatever it might. So cyclic interval of change in work. So W1 plus w2 so minus 40 plus 30 so 10 kilojoules of sorry it is minus 10 kilojoules of work is done on the system since it is negative similarly what are the net e transfer so cyclic interval of change in e transfer or change in e interaction is nothing but summation of all the e interactions so q1 plus q2 plus q3 so q1 is 70 q2 is minus 60 plus q3 so 10 plus q3 is the cyclic interval of all the heat interactions so by first law of thermodynamics we know that for a cyclic process summation or cyclic interval of change in heat is equal to cyclic interval of change in work so if i just equate this so 10 plus q3 will be equal to minus 10 so q3 will be equal to minus 20 kilojoules so the third heat interaction is nothing but around 20 kilojoules of heat and why it is coming as negative that means to say it is being rejected by the gas or rejected by the system so it flows out of the system so third heat interaction is around 20 kilojoules of heat is being rejected by the system okay so this is the solution so let's see the next numerical so similar to the previous one a system undergoes a cycle composed of four processes the heat transfer in each process are 400 kilojoules minus 150 kilojoules minus 300 kilojoules and 125 kilojoules and the respective work transfer are 300 kilojoules zero minus 225 kilojoules and zero so the question asked here is is the data consistent with first law of thermodynamics if so, we are also supposed to find what is the change in the internal energy. So they have given four work process as well as heat transfer. So positive indicates work done on the system, negative indi indicates work done on the system and positive indicates work done by the system. Similarly, heat transfer positive indicates where heat is being added to the system and negative indicates it is being rejected by the system so let us check what is the given data so q1 is 400 q2 is minus 150 q3 is minus 300 and q4 is 125 similarly work done w1 is 300 w2 is 0 0 means no work is being done so neither work is done on the system or by the system so similarly minus 225 work done by the system and w4 is 0 so according to the first law of thermodynamics let us check what is the cyclic interval of change in heat and check cyclic interval of change in work so q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 so if i just sum all those heat transfer so cyclic interval of change in heat works out to be 75 kilojoule similarly net work transfer if i sum all the work done so it will be again 75 
kilo joule so since cyclic interval of change in heat is equal to cyclic interval of change in work so that is the first law of thermodynamics so it clearly confirms to the first law of thermodynamics that all the heat that is being added or rejected will be converted into an equivalent work and you know that entire q will be equal to w so that means to say there is no question of internal energy u so that means to say delta u will also be equal to zero for a cyclic process we assume that there is no heat is being consumed by the system that is nothing but the internal energy is zero so change in internal energy will also be equal to zero so therefore since it is confirming to the first law of thermodynamics so therefore change in internal energy is zero so let's see the next numerical so next numerical is about applying the second law of thermodynamics here work is being done by the system so let us check what is the efficiency and all those things using second law of thermodynamics so this numerical says a heat engine develops 60 kilowatt of power with an efficiency of 40% determine the heat transfer rate to and from the working fluid so according to second law of thermodynamics you know that we have a body at high temperature and we have a body at low temperature so it is being added to an system from here and this delivers you a work so this is not possible converting all the heat being added to the system into an equivalent work so some quantity of heat is also being rejected to a body at lower temperature so this is what the second law of thermodynamics states so here in this particular problem they are given that an engine see if this is an engine the system here what i meant is an engine it is delivering or it is developing a power of 60 kilowatts 60 kilowatts of work is being done by it so overall efficiency of this particular system is 40% so he is asking what is the heat transfer rate to the fluid or from the fluid so you are supposed to find what is heat added to the engine and what is the heat rejected by the engine qh and ql this is what you are supposed to find in this particular problem so work done is nothing but 60 kilojoules of power is being developed so let me convert that into joules per second so it is nothing but 60 joules per second so joules per second is nothing but watt so overall efficiency is given by 40% it is supposed to be 40% as per the given data let's find what is the heat added to the system and heat rejected by the system so thermal efficiency as we discussed in the second law of thermodynamics it is given by what is the work done by the system to the heat input to the system so w by qh qh means heat added from the hot body or from the hot reservoir okay so thermal efficiency is given as 0.4 40% so 60 is the power developed and q1 is the heat added or qh is the heat added to the engine so if we just cross multiply we will come to know that q1 will be equal to 150 kilojoules per second of heat or nothing but 150 kilowatts of heat is being added to the system so we are adding 150 it is the engine so 150 kilowatts of heat is being added so 60 kilowatt of power is being produced by the engine and some heat is being rejected to the system qh or this is qh and this is ql or q1 and q2 so what is q2 then so heat added to the system is q1 or qh so which works out to be 150 kilowatt so what is q2 so obviously out of 150 if 60 kilowatt of power is being developed remaining has to be rejected to the sink right so that is q2 so let us find so w will be equal to q1 minus q2 isn't it or q2 plus w will be equal to q1 so work done is nothing but the difference in the heat added and the heat rejected q1 minus q2 or qh minus ql whatever it is so 60 is equal to 150 minus q2 so 90 kilojoules or 90 kilowatts of heat is being rejected by the system so 150 kilowatts of heat is added to the engine so 60 kilowatts of power is being generated by the engine so remaining 90 kilowatts of heat is being rejected to the 
sink are rejected from the engine okay so this is the solution for the present problem let check uh, let me see one more problem an heat engine delivers 2 kilowatt of power and rejects heat energy to the reservoir which is maintained at 300 kelvin at a rate of 50 kilojoules per minute so determine the efficiency and temperature of the reservoir supplying heat to the engine so this is also very much similar to the previous problem so this is the high temperature body and this is the low temperature body and this is an engine so engine is delivering how much 2 kilowatts of power and it rejects heat so q2 is given how much it is rejecting heat at a rate of 50 kilojoules per minute to a reservoir which is maintained that means to say the temperature of this tl or let us take it as t1 also or t sorry t2 so which is equal to 300 kelvin so this reservoir where it is being rejected is maintained at 300 kelvin and it is being rejected at a rate of what 50 kilojoules per minute and this engine is delivering you 2 kilowatts of it so you have to add it then only you are getting this right so they are asking you what is the efficiency of this system and what is the temperature of this so what is the temperature of this which is supplying the heat okay so hot body is maintained at t1 degree centigrade cold body is maintained at t2 degree centigrade so t2 is being maintained at 300 kelvin okay and it is rejecting heat at a rate of 50 kilojoules per minute and it is delivering a power of 12, 2 kilowatt so they are asking you the efficiency as well as what is the temperature of this hot reservoir which is supplying heat to the engine so this is what you are supposed to find in this particular problem so let's check w is given 2 kilowatt or 2 kilojoules per second heat rejected q2 as i said it is nothing but 50 kilojoules per minute so per minute is being rejecting 50 kilowatt so let us divide by 60 so we'll come to know it is 0.833 kilojoules per second so everything will keep it in terms of kilojoules per second same unit you need to maintain okay so it rejected is 50 kilojoules per minute so convert that into per second by dividing it by 60 so 0.833 kilojoules per second of heat is being rejected by the engine q2 and t2 is being maintained at 300 kelvin so what you are supposed to find the efficiency of the system as well as t1 what is t1 t1 refers to the sink or t1 refer to the hot body which is supplying the heat so let us first find what is q1 so w is known q2 is known so we can find q1 so w is 2 q1 minus 0.833 so q1 will be equal to 2.833 kilojoules per second of heat is the supply so q1 engine q2 this is t1 and this is t2 okay so q1 is 2.88 engine is delivering you 2 kilowatts and 0.833 is being rejected so this is maintained at 300 kelvin so this is what you are supposed to find okay so let's uh, let's first check the efficiency of the system so efficiency as you know that work done by the system as well as divided by the heat supplied so work done is 2 kilowatt heat supplied is 2.833 so it will be 70.5 percent is the thermal efficiency of this particular system okay so the efficiency is done so then still we need to find what is the t1 temperature of the heat supply reservoir okay let us find so we also know that efficiency can also be written in terms of temperature so we have two formulas for efficiency one is written in terms of heat q1 minus q2 divided by q1 so q1 is heat supplied q2 is heat rejected so q1 minus q2 is nothing but w isn't it w by q1 that's what we used so q1 minus q2 divided by heat supplied similarly in terms of temperature t1 minus t2 divided by t1 so t1 refers to hot body temperature t2 refers to cold body temperature okay so efficiency is given we just found out the efficiency to be so point 
705 or 70.5 percent so t2 is 300 kelvin so we can find t1 so t1 works out to be 1020 kelvin okay so temperature of the reservoir which is supplying the heat to the engine is being maintained at 1020 kelvin okay this is the solution for the problem so efficiency is 0 0.705 and the temperature of the hot reservoir is around 1020 kelvin on similar lines let's see one more numerical a heat engine develops 15 kilowatt of power when receiving heat at a rate of 2400 kilojoules per minute evaluate the rate of heat rejection from the engine and the efficiency so q1 is given so it is supplying 2400 kilojoules of heat per minute okay so engine is doing work how much 15 kilojoules per second so q2 is what you are supposed to find as well as you are supposed to find the efficiency okay so w is given 15 kilojoules heat supplied is 2400 kilojoules per minute okay so everything should be converted into kilowatts kilowatts is nothing but kilojoules per second so per second it has to be converted so divide by 60 so q1 works out to be 40 kilojoules per second so q1 is known 40 kilojoules per second and w is 15 kilojoules per second so you are supposed to find q2 as well as the efficiency so q2 you know that w is equal to q1 minus q2 so q2 will works out to be 25 kilojoules per second so let us check what is the thermal efficiency work done by the heat input work done is 15 kilowatts or kilojoules per second and heat being supplied is 40 so 15 by 40 so 37.5 percent is the efficiency of the engine so heat rejected so rate of heat rejection is 25 kilojoules per second or else you can just multiply it by 60 and you can keep in terms of so many kilojoules per minute also okay so per minute or per second you can just show this heat rejected by the system okay so let us see one more problem if a heat engine burns fuel for its thermal energy source and the combustion flame temperature is 2000 degrees centigrade determine the thermal efficiency of the engine if the exhaust to the environment temperature is at 20 so and it's also very much similar to the previous one so what is they have given an heat engine if this is the engine burns fuel for its thermal energy the source and the combustion flame temperature that means that, that heat is that is being supplied to us and this is the heat that is being rejected by the engine okay so the one which is supplying heat to the engine is being maintained at 2000 degrees centigrade and the exhaust to the environment this is the environment okay this is the combustion chamber which is supplying heat to the engine and this is the environment to which we are just expelling out the burnt gases okay so this is receiving heat from the combustion chamber and it is doing some work and it is rejecting the heat to the surrounding or the environment so the combustion chamber is being maintained at 2000 degrees centigrade and after doing the work it is rejecting the heat to the surrounding or the environment which is maintained at what 20 degrees centigrade so that is nothing but what they are given t1 and t2 so t1 is 20 degrees centigrade from where we are supplying the heat and t2 is 20 degrees centigrade from where we are to where we are rejecting the heat so t1 is the temperature from where we are supplying the heat which is 2000 degrees centigrade t2 is where we are rejecting the heat which is maintained at 20 degrees so t1 is given and t2 is given so what you are supposed to find you are just supposed to find the thermal efficiency so very simple numerical so we know that thermal efficiency can be given in terms of the temperatures also so thermal efficiency is given by 1 minus output temperature to the input temperature so 1 minus t1 by t2 okay but one thing you should bear in mind when we are substituting temperature ratios especially when you are substituting ratio if it's a difference it doesn't make much difference so if it is a ratio so then obviously the temperature need to be substituted in 
absolute kelvin okay therefore since we have given temperature in degree centigrade that need to be converted into kelvin so whatever the temperature we give in terms of degree centigrade to that you add 273 so 20 plus 273 plus 2000 plus 273 so ratio of 20 plus 273 to 2000 so efficiency of this particular system works out to be 87.1 percent so this is the solution for the ninth numerical so in total we have solved around nine numericals so more or less it completes the application of first law of thermodynamics as well as second law of thermodynamics so okay so in this particular lesson we did learn the application of first law of thermodynamics and second law of thermodynamics to solve few simple numericals hope to see you again in the next lesson thank you